Dear Chartered Accountants, Working Professionals and Students in the domains of Indian Auditing, Accounting and the Tax and Regulatory Space, Welcome to Podcast of FCA Deepak Rao, a Practicing Chartered Accountant. Daily News and Updates for 28th September 2023 The auto population of e-invoice in GSTR 1 is temporarily halted due to essential system upgrades which will involve the implementation of e-invoice JSON download functionality. This will have a temporary impact on the e-invoice data auto population in GSTR1, which will not be available from 26 September 2023 to 29th September 2023 for all six IRP portals. Dream11 led by Hush Jain has joined the growing list of gaming startups taking legal action against tax authorities over alleged GST evasion. Parent company Dream Sports has filed a writ petition in the Bombay High Court contesting a show cost notice for failing to pay 28% GST on the face value of bets, making it the latest entrant in a high-stakes legal battle. The INR 40,000 crore claim against Dream 11 is poised to set a new record in the history of indirect taxation in India. This staggering figure surpasses the previous high set by the INR 21,000 crore notice served to Gamescraft. As Dream11 and other gaming startups navigate these legal hurdles, the outcome of these disputes will undoubtedly have far-reaching implications for the gaming industry's regulatory framework in India. The Indian government is working on the development of a database that will rank suppliers based on their GST compliance track record, trade history, transaction and supplier history, and any past defaults. This mechanism is expected to be introduced in the upcoming vote on account and implemented in the next financial year. The purpose of this database is to provide businesses with information about the compliance of their vendors, allowing them to assess their risk associated with engaging in business with particular suppliers. The move aims to enhance compliance among small suppliers and prevent large businesses from facing challenges related to input tax credit due to default by their suppliers. Traditional sweets and snacks brand Haldirams earned over a billion dollars from packet snacks during financial year 23, as Indians prefer to munch more desi snacks instead of western ones such as chips. In the year ended March 2023, Haldiram snacks sales hit Rs 9,215 crore or $1.1 billion, a 19% increase from a year ago, according to Nielsen data cited by industry officials. In comparison, PepsiCo snack sales were Rs 6,430 crore or 773 million dollars, while Gujarat-based Balaji wafers took in Rs 5,296 crore or 637 million dollars. Haldi Rams overtook PepsiCo about five years ago to become the country's largest snack brand, and has since widened the sales gap. It now has a 21% share in the Rs 43,800 crore snack food market compared to 15% for Pepsi, while nearly 40% is controlled by over 3,000 smaller or regional players. Vedanta Limited is reportedly considering a restructuring plan that would involve spinning off its businesses into separate listed entities. The move is aimed at helping Anil Agarwal, the tycoon behind the company, manage its debt load. The businesses that could be separately listed include aluminium, oil and gas, iron ore and steel. This podcast is sponsored by Sound of CA. We share because we care. Vande Matram, Jai Hind.